is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, welcome to Chris Abraham Show, the Chris Abraham Show, formerly known as Chris Cast. Today is season five, episode 20. Um, that is 20, and I don't know when I'm going to stop season five. So that is um, uh, Bente, right? Bente? Isn't that 20, Bente? Or is it... Uh, um, uh, 13? Is it 13? Hey, Google, what is German for 20? In German, that's 20. 20. You actually want me to translate? No, thank you. 20. It's 20. 20. Okay, I'll stop translating. Um, 20. Hey, Google, what's 20 in French? In French, that's vin. What else should I translate? Nothing. Sure, I'll stop translating. I say vin. Isn't it vin? In French, that's vin. What else should I translate? Isn't it vin or is it vin? N'est-ce pas mauvais ou est-ce le téléphone? Que? Quoi? Je ne sais pas que tu dis, tu me dis. He what? I don't know what you say you tell me. <laughs> I sound like an idiot. Stop translating. J'ai l'air d'un idiot. Arrêtez de traduire. Arrête. Sure, I'll stop translating. Thank you. Well, I could restart this episode, but I think you guys find this kind of thing funny. So, I was working yesterday from Starbucks and my lovely friend Jason came in. And we chatted. And he asked me about the uh, he asked me about the cop podcast. And when I was on the phone with my friend Linda, I found out that she was listening to me on on uh, on speaker mode, and that she had um, Amazon Echoes or whatever they're called. And I. Uh, I said, uh, Alexa, play the latest episode of the Chris Abraham Show. <sighs> Alexa, play the latest episode of the Chris Abraham Show. Getting the Chris Abraham Show from Amazon Music. Here's Season 5, Episode 19, S5PM Wavering Libertarian Stand. Unconditional support for transgender rights. Alexa, Liber stop. So, I, uh, I was driven to make this episode. Now, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I didn't think about it until just now. I was cleaning dishes and pans and realized that I don't have any fat or oil to treat my steel and cast iron pans with, so I felt like a bad father. My kids are apparently my bicycle my dumbbells, my kettlebells, my pens, my knives, and my guns. So I am a Catholic boy because that's well over 10 things. So I am a good Catholic. I have many children. But I've been thinking about uh, the fact that everybody goes very quickly to, Chris, you carry water for Putin. I literally had my fraternity brother take me to dinner and ask me point blank, are you being paid by the Russians for what you're writing on social and Facebook and Twitter and Mastodon? And my answer to him is, do you know anybody in Moscow? Because I'm doing this for free. And I get a lot of this, even even after uh, the Durham 
the Durham, right? It's not Dunham. It's after the Durham report and after it's been proven that uh, all you have to do is uh, tell tell somebody that you are a you carry water for Putin and you are disgraced, right? So that was the strategy by Hillary Clinton against uh, Trump or Hillary Clinton's camp against Trump. And we all know that the um, the Steele dossier was BS and Russiagate was BS and uh, PP tape is BS and uh, just about every allegation against anybody that they are in fact carrying water for Putin or they are a Russian asset is merely um, mudslinging, good old fashioned mudslinging. You can tell because now I saw someone in, uh, on Mastodon say that um, Jill Stein and uh, comment dire, what's his name? Hey Google, who is the presidential nominee for the Green Party? Cornell West. On the website ballotpedia.org, they say the Green Party. No, Alexis, Hopkins stop. Who's Corn uh, Cornell West? Ale uh, hey Google, who's Cornell West? Hey Google, who's Cornell West? According to Wikipedia, Cornell Ronald West is an American philosopher, political activist, social critic, actor, and public intellectual. The grandson of Hey Google. Minister is Cornell West a Russian asset? Sorry, I don't understand. Hey Google, is Jill Stein a Russian asset? According to Wikipedia, in October 2019, Hillary Clinton said that Russia's ongoing efforts to influence U.S. elections included a plot to support a third-party candidate in 2020, which could either be Jill Stein, whom she described as a Russian asset, or Tulsi Gabbard. Oh, Hillary. Oh, Hillary Clinton and Russiagate. Oh, Hillary Clinton. Oh, you. I don't know anything about Jill Stein. I know that she was... I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey, Google, stop. Okay, stopping bows. So, uh, at the end of the day, um, I know Jill Stein, was she part of the progressive party, right? She was, uh, or the, hey Google, what party was Jill Stein part of? Jill Stein is a member of the Green Party of the United States. And I remember Jill Stein took votes away from Hillary Clinton, right? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Jill Stein cost Hillary dearly in 2016. Denim, Denim. So it's obviously a hit job. If anybody calls you a water carrier for Putin, it's not that you're literally... Um, uh, hey, Google, who is the uh, British person who is a supporter of, uh, of Hitler? According to Wikipedia... Unity Valkyrie Freeman Mitford, the 8th of August 1914 to the 28th of May 1948, was a British socialite known for her relationship with Adolf Hitler. Both in Great Britain and Germany, she was a prominent supporter of Nazism, fascism and anti-Semitism, and belonged to Hitler's inner circle of friends. Well, I don't remember, but everybody always remember, I remember from history class where they always used to tell me that there was a, um, a, a British supporter or enabler, or appeaser. Hey, Google, who is the British appeasement policy of uh, Hitler during before World War II? On the website IWM.org... There we are, Neville Chamberlain. Say, Neville Chamberlain, instituted in the hope of avoiding war, appeasement was the name given to Britain's policy in the 1930s of allowing Hitler to expand German territory unchecked. Most closely associated with British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain, it is now widely discredited as a policy of weakness. So there we go. So Neville Chamberlain is hereby considered to be an appeasement Brit. And Neville Chamberlain is almost always used as a parity, an echo, a comparison, a useful tool to say that anybody who 
uh, is anti-Ukrainian war or anti-war in general or doesn't believe the narrative associated with the Ukraine-Russian conflict or believes even that uh, the Imperial West spurred... I don't know, but I found hey, Google, on... stop! Okay, stopping office display. Uh, so annoying. But also useful, so there's my paradox. Um, so it's such shorthand, right? It's such shorthand uh, that anything that we want means that you are a fascist and everything you don't, we don't want means that you are an appeasement policy person. Now, I feel very strongly about all of these things, but I don't care one way or the other. I am only allergic to lying and bullshitting and propaganda and duplicity and hypocrisy. I'm not pro anything. I hate war. Um, and I feel like the West had <clears throat> 25 years since the discussion with Russia, then the Soviet Union, about not moving eastward past uh, Eastern Germany and not um, hegemonically including uh, Eastern, Cent Eastern Central Europe and Eastern Europe in the uh in the borg known as the uh at that time um nato and then not much later known as uh the european union now i wouldn't even care about any of this stuff but i lived in berlin and i got to see how how much ukraine and eastern europe and central europe and even western europe how dependent they were on Russian gas and oil. How uh, you can very quickly turn off all of Europe if you were to turn off the pipelines coming from Russia, gas and oil. And I uh, saw that countries like Germany and France and a lot of other countries had very friendly relationships with the former Soviet Union out of necessity, right? And this didn't stand very well at all uh, when it came to uh, the people who were writing the checks, which is namely, namely the United States and, uh, and I guess, um, you know, corporations. But mostly, mostly, you know, Western borrowing, Western banks, Western investment, um, and the military industrial complex, along with taxpayer money and money borrowed from China. So and I said to myself that this isn't going to last. Um, this friendly nature, this friendliness with, uh, with, with Russia, uh, the fact that uh, Russian money was flowing into um, the city of London and was flowing into... Um, Paris and London and Italy and Monaco and the French Riviera and Italy and um, how, you know, uh, even places like Sochi and so forth were becoming appealing to for a cheap, cheaper, m more affordable. I mean, there was there was really a kind of de facto integration and melding already between Russia and uh, Western Europe, that was completely uncomfortable. I mean, Russia is patently... Pa Russia might be a serfdom. They're sur surely still rural serf-level people. There are definitely rurals and low caste and what would be called... Um, what's the term for rural... Like, hey Google, what's the modern term for rur extremely rural or surf uh, modern surfs? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey Google, what is the concept of modern SERF? On the website web-strategist.com, they say a modern day surf is doing the work for others creating content, creating data, driving others around. 
managing physical properties for rent so others can profit on marketplaces, and working for others as a contractor without full benefits. I also found Hey Google, that- what is uh, Russia's modern feudalism called? I don't know, but I found these results on search. So anyway, I would um, the analogy here is that Russia has become an oligarchical serfdom, a feudal, a feudalistic society based on modern oligarchy, right? And uh, it is driven by Moscow and Saint Petersburg. I don't Petersburg. know, but I found these results on search. Uh, it's driven by you know Saint Petersburg uh, and and Moscow, and from there. Uh, There are, you know, mostly rural areas. That's mostly where the population density is. And um, over time, the definition of Russia as being a uh, an autocratic North Korea type uh, despotic place um, akin to. Hey, Google, where's that country where all the cars have to be white? On the website rferl.org, they say you can have whatever color car you want in Turkmenistan as long as it is white. So Putin is not a Turkmenistan-esque de- despot. He is a Russian... I don't know, but I found these results on search. I'm going to ignore you. 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 So even though... Putin is being painted as a Turkmenistani despot. He doesn't have any form of of Turkmenistani despotism. He uh, is obviously extremely wealthy and benefits personally from his 25-year leadership, whether or not he was uh, the man as the president or the man behind the president, which happened during one term. However, I mean, Nancy Pelosi has $100 million, so I, I would think that if Nancy Pelosi spent another 25 years, um, I feel like, um, hey, Google, how much is Obama, Barack Obama worth? On the website GoBankingRates.com, they say Barack Obama's net worth, $70 million. Celebrity Net Worth and Business Insider have both reported the former president's net worth as $70 million. People also ask. Hey Google, how, how much? much uh, how much is uh, Joe Biden's uh, personal net worth? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Uh, his net worth in twenty twenty three is nine million dollars. Who knows? I don't know. I'm just saying that uh, that there's no such thing as a poverty present anymore. There's ne- there's no such thing as a president of the people. I mean, there's never been, right? Like, um, the only thing differentiating our president in terms of um, two-tier law is the following. The first one is, um, if you say you're not king, I guess you're not king. In the same way that um, America has a thousand bases around the world, and because we say that we're not neocolonialists, and that the countries where our thousand base are, bases are aren't our uh, neo colonies. Just because we say it, we're like, no, we're a democracy. No, we're exporting democracy. No, we're just partners with other democratic countries that are completely autonomous and have complete personal agency. If you say it aloud enough, it, it, it has to be true. So we are not modern colonials, uh, just like Great Britain is not is no longer a modern colonial power. And because people say that Great Britain is our poodle, it means that Great Britain and the city of London isn't actually our daddy. We're its daddy. And the power of London is completely diminished and they don't barely mean anything in the world. And they're just so sad, especially with Brexit. Like, they're so sad. They're just a little island. Like, if you talk to Great Britain, they're like, oh, we're just a wee island. We don't have any power globally. We just are we. We, um, the sun is set on our wee little, our wee little island. 
Oh, we're just so charming. We're so Elizabethan. Oh, we're just so cute. Just like the Dutch. Oh, we're just the Dutch. We don't have global interests in petroleum completely. We're not the most influential country in the entire world dealing with uh, metals and resources and mining and uh, and building and oil and gas and shale. No, 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 no. That's silly. We like we have a silly, funny little royalty, and uh, we are based on uh, the word orange. Isn't that cute? So adorable. Um. So if you say it, it's true. So because we say that Russia is a an authoritarian nation where everybody is still thrown into the gulag, and because even though all the language we use is patently untrue because Russia collapsed in 89, 90, 91, 92, etc., and because um, it hasn't been actively communistic, totalitarian, despotic, etc. in 30 years. Um, but if you say it loud enough, you can stoke uh, the Cold War fears. They're just right under the surface. And since everybody in Congress is over 75 um, and over 60, I mean, I was alive and uh, I was alive uh, during the Cold War. Like, I mean, it wasn't I mean, I was 19, 20, 21 when everything collapsed, but still, you know, in my, in my, uh, the first, uh, 19, 18, 19, 20 years of my life, uh, the, um, the thermonuclear war was nigh. So, and Berlin was spooky and there was Eastern, Western Germany and Eastern Europe was all black and white. And everybody just drove around in Trabants and Ladas and, and it was really sad. And they were pathetic. And um, all their power lifters were, uh, what, trans women? Or completely... And we didn't think that there were any beautiful women. There were no beautiful women because all we saw were uh, power lifters. And so we didn't know that... Uh, Eastern European women are probably the most beautiful women on earth and probably the smartest and funniest and cleverest and, and most lovely. So that was propaganda. And so, um, I don't know, right? Like, I feel like, uh, the woman on Mastodon was throwing stones at Jill Stein, calling her a Russian asset and then calling Cornell West a Russian asset and I'm like, hey, lady, you're a Russian asshat. She didn't get it because there's no humor when you are a true believer. So I called her a Russian asshat and she didn't get it. But I feel like I've been called a Russian asset a million times. I feel like if you're remotely curious about um, the true number of casualties and dead, uh, we know it's uh, probably... Uh, between five and ten to one, and not in the direction that the uh, media is telling you. It's more like uh, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dead Ukrainians versus twenty thousand, right? And so that means six hundred thousand casualties, um, two hundred thousand dead. I feel like the numbers are swapped, right? Whatever the numbers are. They're like, no, let's swap it and make that the Russian casualties. Uh, so the latest news is that they were um, saying this is the first and worst humiliation that um, Putin ever received, which was the fact that um, uh, the Wagner leader um, supposedly, oh, he did, he did, um, uh, what is the term? Hey, Google, what is the word for when um, a, the uh, ship's crew... Oh, mutiny. It's mutiny. I don't know, but I found these results on search. So it's mutiny. I don't know, but I found these results on search. Uh, anyway, so um, 
the biggest humiliation that uh, Putin ever had was the mutiny that the leader of a mercenary unit, this wasn't actually his troops, these are mercs, right? For the history of the world, mercs were bad. Um, I used to read Soldier of Fortune in high school because I thought mercenaries are not bad, they're badass. But, um, you know, we talk about, what is it, G, or what what was it called, Blackwater? Uh, We talk about um, all of these organizations as being shadowy and terrible and monstrous. And, you know, we're talking about how Wagner is going all over uh, Africa and so forth, um, killing people en masse. And then, uh, of course, Wagner's being used as a, as a, as an additional force in Ukraine. And everybody in the world is like, um, mercenaries are terrible. Mercenaries are terrible. And then when there's this mutiny, oh, um, uh, mercenaries on the side of good. They obviously hate what Putin's doing. They support Ukraine. But mercenaries aren't like that. Mercenaries aren't... If this were an actual mutiny of of actual generals and actual main force, etc., that would be different. But this is the mutiny of uh, paid mercs. Like, mercenaries are are driven by money and hubris and pride, and they're not... Patriots, they're they're paper truts, pay 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 p a y triots. They're patriots. They're fair with their friends. This mutiny could have been simple, as simple as um, one of uh, an, uh, an oligarch or an American oligarch or a, 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 a political opponent or a a, a a a tech bro. Whoever could have said. I'll double whatever Putin's paying you. And uh, the guy's like, okay, what do you want me to do? And so my response when everybody was parroting and echoing the, this is the biggest humiliation ever to happen to Putin. What I didn't say is, I don't know if I'd be that humiliated if a bunch of paid mercs uh, turned their back on me because you just assume that the paid mercs are going to be disloyal. Like, just assume that if you pay somebody to love you, they don't actually love you. Uh, It's like, mercs are like whores, right? Mercs are whores. Sorry, mercs, but you're whores. Um, Whores will tell you they love you. They'll give you a girlfriend experience, but they're still whores. Um, And whores can be boys and girls, I'm not, or, or they can be theirs. I'm not being sexist here. Whores or whores or whores. So, um, so a mutiny by a whore is not nearly as bad as a two brute. So, but it didn't happen. Obviously, someone uh, cut the check. Someone Venmoed. Someone uh, wired something, and it all went away. Maybe uh, Belarus spotted Putin. For another trillion dollars, maybe a couple, like maybe a couple hundred Bitcoin. Who knows? Um, maybe, uh, maybe Elon Musk did some Dogecoin over to uh, Wagner Group to make sure that it didn't go sideways with nukes, or maybe George Soros booga booga booga. Who knows? But whatever happened, my response was. If you think that's the most humiliating thing that's ever happened to Putin, how about you made a pledge with uh, George W. George H. W. Bush Sr. and you said, "Okay, I will be happy to uh, move forward. You know, close all the books, make sure everything's fine, as long as you promise not to push forth towards uh, the border with uh, Russia." Make sure I at least have this Ukrainian buffer state. You know, maybe even just like if you really need to. Like Donbass is pretty great. Like we get along there. It's all love. Don't forget, Ukraine is Russia holy land. Uh, Ukraine was the birthplace of entire Russian civilization. Consider Ukraine a little bit like Jerusalem, right? For Russians, Ukraine is like Jerusalem, 
Ukraine is like uh, is like um, is like the is like Mecca. You know, don't mess with Ukraine. Oh, okay, no problem. And then because we can't help ourselves and because we are the global hegemon and because nobody has figured out that we're a colonial country and that we uh and that Eur Europe is our colony because we own it because we pay for all of their defense and that they are in a a um and that they're sorry about that and that they are kind of be help be beholden to us in sort of a Faustian bargain and um maybe even Great Britain is part of the puppet meister and all of these other things that because we f do color revolutions and because we're exporting democracy which are good and because we're exporting liberal democracy which is good and because we're exporting feminism which is good and feminism is is um is much more sophisticated and modern and humane than uh than any of your I mean we love Muslims don't get us wrong we love Catholics don't get us wrong and we love Buddhists don't get us wrong and we love Hindus don't get us wrong we love you but you you are against human uh nature and you are against human freedom and you break every single civil right in the entire world and you are an offense of to humanity and and if you don't support gay marriage and if you don't support uh the health care of women and abortion and the liberation uh theology and black liberation theory and critical race theory even though these things are brand new and we just sort of came up with them and they've got a tinge of uh, marxism and and uh and socialist ideology on them they got that stink and even though they might be materialist beliefs and even though quietly you can hear us uh dissing the fact that you believe in sky daddy don't mind any of that stuff and then all of a sudden collapses falls and so forth fomenting um, um what basically are vote based coup d'etats and then before you know it the new parliaments vote in nato and the eu and the euro and that's nothing like world war ii and the hunger of um of hitler for the domination of other countries because this is opt in it's not opt out this is opt in just like the eugenics movement if you want to abort your fetus then that's that's empowering if you want to start taking hormonal therapies that make you um uh unable to have children ever that's not eugenics that's 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 your decision that's your health care if you want to end your life early because you're extremely depressed or you're getting old, your quality of life is low, that's compassion. That's not eugenics. That's not a genetic um, ethno-cleansing. That is a empowerment agency choice. So now uh, Hungary and maybe Poland and Russia and so forth, they're getting, you know, too extremist right they're they're showing that they like uh sky daddy and they believe in sky daddy and they honor sky daddy and that uh they honor um marriage traditional marriage between a man and a woman which of course we call dirty breeders and they bristle at the fact that children are trying to be liberated into their uh their gender of choice and all these things are too much for them they're not evolved enough they're not modern enough they're not they're not um awake enough they're not woke enough they haven't come to jesus about um the neoliberal um they should be much kinder uh because this is a 
an inquisition of sorts. And in an inquisition, everybody gives you an opportunity to accept uh, accept uh, Christ, right? You Jewish? Well, you're not Jewish anymore, or we're going to torture and kill you and your family. Oh, you're Muslim? Well, you know, that's fine and all, but now you're Christian, and now you're Catholic, and if you're not, then uh, you and your family will be killed. Um, oh, you're, you're, you're Hindu? Oh, you're Buddhist? No, now you're Christian, and you're actually going to change your name. And uh, I want one of your sons for the uh, for this for the uh, the seminary, and um, and one of your daughters for the nunnery, because now you are observant Catholics. Um, so there we are on a global inquisition. It's I guess called the Democrat Inquisition or the um, uh, Progressive Liberal or Modern Liberal Inquisition, and we're going around the world. And we're saving pagan babies. Not awful like saving pagan babies like those awful colonial Christians who wanted to destroy um, their natural culture, their current culture, and replace it with Christianity. But like the good thing, which is like everybody can be any gender they want. Anybody should appreciate the state more than the family. Uh, nobody should signify any type of extremist religion. So no hijab, uh, all those other kinds of things. And then you too can be accepted into the faith and not end up in prison or dead. Amen. Or whatever whatever uh, materialistic amen is. Uh, huzzah, maybe. So... Uh, the funny thing is about this whole deal is while we were f completely asleep at the wheel, um, hey Google, when did uh, BRICS form? B R I C S. The B R I C S was founded on June sixteenth, two thousand nine. I also found an answer to this question: Where was the headquarter of BRICS? Do you want to hear it? Yes. Shanghai. On the website testbook.com, they say, the correct answer is Shanghai. BRICS headquarter is located in Shanghai, China. Hey Google, tell me all about BRICS. According to Wikipedia, BRICS, originally named BRIC, is an acronym for the regional economies of Brazil, Russia, India and China, which in 2010 had included the letter S for South Africa. Tell me more about BRICS. According to Wikipedia, BRICS, originally named BRIC, is an acronym for the regional economies of Brazil, Russia, India, and China, which in 2010 had included the letter S for South Africa. Hey Google, how powerful is BRICS? I don't know, but I found these results on search. The first result is uh, the new BRICS alliance is a mortal threat to the West. So while we weren't, while we were asleep at the wheel, and doing a bunch of internal Trump hate, and while we were uh, having Trump derangement syndrome, while we were completely freaking out and hitting the streets and having our own domestic violence, the neighborhood was changing, and the neighborhood was changing uh, to, if you will, rally against this crazy country. And now, all the countries that we, that we call second world or developing world are uniting against us. And so now, hey, Google, what's 2023 minus uh, 2009? 2009? I don't know, but I found these. Hey, Google, answers. what's 2023 minus 2009? 2023 minus 2009 is 14. So 14 years ago, BRICS started, right? Like in uh, 13 years ago, uh, South Africa was added, right? And all of these countries are extremely resource uh, rich. Uh, China, for example, uh, makes all of our stuff. And I learned yesterday on uh, YouTube that the only reason California is so carbon neutral is because it does all of its ugly stuff in mainland China and then ships the finished product, including large works 
uh, pieces, such as bridges and so forth, uh, after all of the uh, smelting and coal fire and electric fire and all the awful stuff happens, it cleans the blood off and then delivers it to China and so, I mean, to California. And ergo, uh, there is no carbon offset required because all that was done uh, NIMBY, not in my backyard. So you have China with huge amounts of resources, right? Let's go through BRICS. Brazil, Brazil is what we like to call a shithole favela country uh, full of sexy people um, who loves Jesus, who love Jesus. And, you know, they are um, multi culty already. They're like a really extremely giant Cuba. Uh, they're pretty lawless. They've got huge gun laws, but they're extremely resource uh, intensive. They've got huge amounts of resources. They're a cornucopia of beauty, excitement, and favelas. I mean, we love them so much. Actually, they are Russia and Brazil are more like America than any other country on earth. So, um, if you see a reflection in um, Brazil, Brazil has the reflection that's multiculti and lawless, and Russia has the reflection that's like uh, proud, uppity, insane, and uh, sickly, drunk, addicted, alcoholic, and toothless, right? So um, maybe the creativity, maybe the depression and sadness, maybe the hubris. I think the hubris we get from, uh, from Russia and the lawlessness we get from Brazil, Brazil. Um, so Brazil is uh, the B. R is Ru Ruski. Ruski is R. So that's our another brother from another mother. And that is the country that we're hating on. Or uh, we only hate Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel Goldstein. I mean um, Voldemort Putin. I mean Vladimir Putin. We hate him. We love the Russian people. We love the Russian people. We hate Vladimir Putin. We love the Russian people. All right, so that's the R. I is India. India, right? Are you starting to see that these are um, the people uh, that we've stomped all over, right? Let, let's assume that, um, that Britain is our double secret daddy, like... Britain, actually, we ne the revolution never really happened. It was all kind of a joke to placate the natives. And so, like, Britain has always been our, our daddy. But it's been switcheroo. It's like, no, no. Br Britain is our l l lap dog. They're actually not our, our puppet master daddies. Um, so, um, these are all countries that that have been oppressed, that have been colonized, that have been destroyed, that have been undermined. Every single one of them has been at one point or another shit-canned by Britain or America or or the EU, right? Even, I mean, we, we America was pretty much, America, Britain, and, and Europe pretty much collapsed South Africa by the whole Nelson Mandela movement, by the whole, like, we divest our investment in South Africa until, um, until um, apartheid is abolished. And even me, totally me, totally anti-apartheid, totally pro-Nelson Mandela. I mean, hey, but every action has a reaction. So um, uh, South Africa, right? Um, and China, right? So... Brazil, Russia, India, China, and Zud, Zud Africa, whatever. Um, their, their name is Za. So there must be some Afrikaans. Hey, Google, what's the name for uh, South Africa and Afrikaans? Here is your translation. 
Zweet Africa, Zweet Africa. Hey Google, why is the top level domain ZA for South Africa? On the website Gandhi.net, they say ZA domain name ending is an abbreviation for Zuid Africa, the Dutch name for South Africa. I also found an answer to this question. Why does South Africa use ZA? Do you want to hear it? Yes. According to Wikipedia.org, management, none of the official names for South Africa can be abbreviated to ZA, which is an abbreviation of the Dutch Zuid Africa. Dutch was considered an official language in the Union of South Africa until 1961. It subsequently lost its synonymous status with Afrikaans in 1983. Thank you. Happy to help. Um, very interesting. I thought it might have been that. Um, so, that's a pretty big thing. 13, 14 years. Um, up until now, even now, nobody mentions it. Nobody talks about it. They don't talk about it like a competitor. They don't talk about it like it's an opposition uh, NATO or an opposition EU or an opposition uh, um, uh, West. Uh, we talk about it uh, dismissively as if it's some sort of loose thing, kind of like a drinking club. Um, hey, Google, who invented the BRICS? According to Wikipedia, the earliest fired bricks appeared in Neolithic China. Hey, Google, who invented BRICS? The BRICS has four founders, Russia, China, India, and Brazil. Anyway, um, hey, Google, what is the origin of the name BRICS? On the website guides.loc.gov, they say BRICS is the acronym denoting the emerging national economies of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The term was originally coined in 2001 as BRIC by the Goldman Sachs economist Jim O'Neill in his report, Building Better Global Economic BRICs. I also found an answer to this question. Where did BRICS originate? Do you want to hear it? Yes. According to wikipedia.org, the original acronym, BRIC, was coined in 2001 by Goldman Sachs economist Jim O'Neill, who created the term to describe fast-growing economies that would collectively dominate the global economy by 2050. So, 2001 it was invented, huh? Thank you. 2000, 2001 it was invented, but it didn't actually come into importance until uh, a number of years later but it was spoken into existence and now it's a real thing um, BRICS has a lot of influence and it's becoming stronger and stronger to the point where um china has russia's back right i don't know but i found these results on search <sighs> like china has russia's back now and india has russia's back and Brazil has Russians, Russia's back. And even though nobody really talks about it, Iran has Russia's back. Iran has always had Russia's back because we've turned our back. And because there's so many uh, financial um, um, sanctions on Iran, there's financial sanctions on, uh, on Russia, um, there are trade tariffs on China, like... When I was working for Newconomy.media, I kind of had my eyeballs much more... This is 2017. I had my eyeballs on, um, on Bitcoin. And a lot of the whales were, in fact, China and Russia. And they were doing huge Bitcoin trades outside of the official um, monetary um, um, system. They were doing billions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin. These whales were doing Bitcoin trades back and forth to each other to buy and sell things outside of the official trade uh, sanctions and so forth. And so there is a gray economy and even more. I don't know if I said this, told this story, but in 1996, I met an oil broker who was the um, the cousin of the woman I was traveling with, An, uh, An Haas is her name now. 
and and uh, and and Herring and Brassard and Brassard. Now she's Anne Haas, and uh, her cousin was a oil broker, and he has an American passport. But he was telling me that he brokers all different countries that have sanctions on them, guaranteed not allowed to broker oil. Uh, brokered oil with Cuba, brokered oil with Iran, brokered Iran oil, brokered Iraq oil, brokered like all kinds of oil, uh, Venezuelan oil when there were sanctions on them. And he's like, you know, all we did was we, de you know, I guess I'm using a term, but the term I'm using is decantered, which is to say you took the original bottle that had, you know, Iran on it, and you poured the oil into a into a fresh vessel, which didn't have any Iran on it. It had Saudi Arabia or or whatever. So you just like rebottle, rebottle, rebottle. Take the and deliver to Cuba and do this and that. It's just like World War II when um, the Germans had to decide whether or not a ship was in fact uh, filled with passengers or filled with munitions before they. Uh, torpedoed them. So they ended up torpedoing everybody because they just assumed everything was a ruse. There is an entire um, extra national economy that goes on completely ignoring uh, American sanctions, American limits, American tariffs, American blockades and whatever. There's a giant middle finger going off. Uh, there's an equivalent of the dark web with regards to what do we call the dark world where, um, you know, um, uh, every country that's being sanctioned is pleading poor mouth while secretly uh, flush with cash. You can't assume that just because um, someone's um, uh, swatting the ground singing uncle, 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 that they aren't secretly Scrooge McDuck uh, swimming around in their own giant pit of money and jewels and gold and uh, platinum and silver and diamonds, whatever. So anyway, this is a super long episode. It's like a million hours long. So I will hereby stop now and hope you enjoyed it and um, want you to know that even though I am not, um, I'm, I'm told by Jason that the reason why everybody's shitting all over me about my neutral uh, support, my support of Tassie, Tulsi Gabbard, I love her. I completely support John F. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I completely support um, uh, Jimmy Dore. I love Tucker Carlson. I think that um, that Elon Musk is a mensch. I think that. Um, uh, um, Joe Rogan is an awesome guy. I adore Adam Curry. I adore but hate Adam Carolla. I adore John C. Dvorak. I love to listen to Glenn Beck once in a while. I'll even pop into Info Infowars to hear what uh, what crazy Alex Jones is saying. Um. You know, I'm just like, I try to piss everybody off by going into Sputnik and RT and sharing those articles. And people shit themselves. Like, I can't tell you how much I've been blocked. Um, my instance uh, for Mastodon is Abraham.su. And even that is a flex towards you guys are so stupid. The Cold War died. Um, hey, Google, how many years ago did the Cold War die? According to Wikipedia, Cold War, 1985 to 1991, the time period of around 1985 to 1989 marked the final period of the Cold War. Hey Google, how many years since 1989? On the website howlongagogo.com, they say 1989 was 33 years, 5 months and 25 days ago, which is 12,229 days. 33 is the magic number. 33 is the magic number. So based on that, 33 years ago, man, the Soviet Union went kaput. And so I went on to um, my registrar that I discovered in Berlin. And I registered Abraham dot 
SU. SU stands for... Hey, Google, what does the top-level domain SU stand for? I don't know, but I found these results on search. SU is an internet country code top-level domain that was designated for the Soviet Union on 19 September 1990. So I have two .SU domains. I have Abraham. I've always wanted... Like, I've always been envious of people like adam at curry.com, right? That's actually his email address, adam at curry.com. I admire uh, anybody who's got their first name at last name.com. So, obviously, that's not possible because the name Abraham or Abraham or e uh, is, is like, uh, hey, Google, who was the prophet Abraham? According to Wikipedia, Abraham is the common Hebrew patriarch of the Abrahamic religions, including Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Thank you. Just so, doing my job. So being that Abraham is the patriarch of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, uh, it's hard to find anything Abraham anything, right? Couldn't find anything anything until I found the fact that godless people, the Soviet is it's a, it's a perfect, perfect crime. Not only was the Soviet union, godless communists and materialists, but the country died in 1990, right? Or 1991 or not, whatever, whenever the Soviet union died and went away and broke up into uh, the Russian Federation at all. Um, nobody cared about the SU top level domain. So it's mostly been caught in amber. And I, I took the mastodon out of amber. I took the mastodon, if you will, out of ice, out of permafrost. I took the mastodon out of permafrost and reanimated it into Abraham dot su so now if you email me at chris at abraham dot su or you go to abraham dot su slash at chris you'll find my mastodon instance so i am constantly f f f like giving you the finger all of you because of your crazy crazy obsession with needing to find an external enemy and you need to find an external enemy that's not china because um, we love China a long time and we just can't, we can't hate on a place that's so essential for our quality of life. And the fact that we're going to off, we're going to uh, NIMBY our entire country into China. Not in my backyard, not in my USA, but we're going to coal fire in China we're going to gas fire, we're going to frack, we're going to nuke, we're going to do everything. We're going to allow those people to suck in soot, suck it in soot, and then we're going to be a graceful little solar, uh, whatever, battery, solar, wind, utopia here. We're just going to bogart all of our petroleum reserves and all of our abiotic oil and all of our we're, we're going to give another 30 to 50 years to let all of the oil abiotically fill back up all of the um the wells that we've depleted over the last 100 years and then everything will be perfect and hopefully the according to the crazy secret eugenicists that america and our elk are you know hopefully by then uh, there'll only be a population of, you know, 2.5 billion people because of a bunch of global oopsies. Uh, but none of it's our fault, just global oopsies. And then uh, maybe when we're down to 500 million or a billion or a couple few billion people, we can start drilling baby drilling. And then we can start driving around our Lambos, Ferraris, uh, hypercars, uh, Puganis, and um, uh, uh, Porsche 918s and all those other fun things without worrying about the environment. Amen. Uh...
for entertainment purposes. Oh, and I got to tell you, if I have any recommendations for you, uh, watch Wag the Dog, read Wag the Dog the book, awesome. But that wasn't what I was thinking about. What I was thinking about is um, something I completely forgot about. So I completely had a brain fart. Don't remember that at all. Uh, oh, sweet universe, why did you take that thought from my head? Was it too bombastic? Would it get me disappeared? I don't know. What was I thinking? I... Well, if I think about it, I will put it into the next episode. But, um... Oh, oh, I remember. If you can... If you want... If you if you mail me a, uh, a, a, um, a thumb drive, I have every single episode of the Art Bell show from coast to coast. I have every single episode on my hard drive. And, um, you're welcome to it, uh, if you send me a, uh, a thumb drive to my address. Um, but every Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, there's, uh, um, Somewhere in Time, I think is what it's called. Somewhere in Time. Hey, Google, what are the, uh weekly Saturday episodes with Art Bell. Is it called Back in Time or Somewhere in Time? According to Wikipedia, classic episodes of Coast to Coast AM can be heard in some radio markets on Saturday nights under the name Somewhere in Time hosted by Bell. Thank you. Not a problem. So, every Saturday, every Saturday at 9 p.m., if I'm home, I will always find a radio show. I will always find a radio station that I can stream that has uh, somewhere in time with Art Bell and they will replay episodes from the 90s and 2000s and you'll start to realize when you peg your reality on what people were saying in the 90s and you realize that it's the same old recycled crap you, you, you the 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 scales will fall from your eyes the most revolutionary act you can do in the entire world is get is send me a a usb drive i will fill it with every art bell episode and listen to it and realize that this is all recycled stuff all the apocalypse apocalypticism all the um the the uh the Russia panic, all the Putin panic, all the North Korea panic, all the, um, uh, uh, you know, Ted Kaczynski stuff, all the fears of, 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 um, uh, white supremacy, all the fears of climate collapse, all the, um, uh, all the Al Gore stuff is like fresh in the nineties. You will have your, you will poop yourself. Your head will explode. Your wig will go flying off, so make sure you don't wear your wig in public with these in your earphones. Go back and consume all the episodes, and there's a million of them, of the Art Bell Show uh, from coast to coast. Uh, hey, Google, what year? What years did Art Bell do uh, his radio show? According to Wikipedia... His original 1978 Late Night Las Vegas program on KDWN was a political call-in show under the name West Coast AM. In 1988, Bell and Alan Corbett renamed the show Coast to Coast AM and moved its broadcast from the Plaza Hotel in Las Vegas to Bell's home in Perum. I also found an answer to this question. What happened to Art Bell's wife? Do you want to hear it? No. Okay. Hey Google, what year did Art Bell host Coast to Coast AM? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey, Google, what years did Art Bell host Coast to Coast AM? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Uh, I don't know. Hey, Google, what year did Art Bell stop hosting Coast to Coast AM regularly? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Oh, je ne sais pas. Je ne connais pas. Euh. All right. Well, it doesn't matter. You should do it. That's your task. 
Till next time, I love you. I believe in you. I want the best for you. God bless you. And God speed to you. Talk to you soon. Ciao. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.